In the past, I've talked a lot about different settings and tips and tricks in Windows, but I found out recently that there's one very important old feature that's been around forever that has apparently been disabled by default in Windows 10, at least sometimes, and that is System Restore. You may know this as an incredibly useful feature that allows you to restore the Windows operating system and settings and programs back to a previous point in time called a system restore point. This feature has been around since way back into Windows ME and typically Windows automatically creates one of these every time there is a very critical or a significant update in Windows. That way if it breaks something, you can just restore it. But like I said, for some people it seems that Windows had a policy of disabling it by default in Windows 10, unless perhaps you already had it enabled when you did an upgrade from a previous version. So obviously being such an important feature, I'm gonna show you how you can check whether it's enabled or not, and of course how to enable it if it isn't, and it's very easy to do this. And then we're also gonna go over a process for how you can set up automatic system restore points if you want to happen every three days or so, or however often you want. That way if something breaks, you'll always have a recent system restore point to go back to. I should also definitely stress that none of this is a replacement for doing proper backups. So this just changes and restores settings and programs. It doesn't affect any files. So if you have, for example, installed a program since the previous restore point, it will undo and uninstall that program as if you never had installed it, which is important because a lot of times breaking things is caused by programs you might installed or updates, so it makes sense. But it won't remove any documents or files that you've created or saved since that restore point, but that also means that it won't bring back any files that you may have deleted, so you can't just do this if you accidentally deleted a file and you wanna restore it a system restore point is not gonna do it, that that's what a backup would be able to do for you. But anyway, enough chit chat, let's get into how to enable system restore if it is not already. So first you just have to click start in the start menu and bring it up and then type restore point and then that'll give you the option to click create system restore point. Now this is deceptive and confusing because this does not actually go to create a restore point right away. It just brings up all the system restore settings. So it's a stupid name, but that's the one you have to click on. So in here, you're gonna see several options relating to system restore. And it also is gonna be called system protection in some places here, it's the same thing. Then you'll want to look at protection settings, which is gonna show all your drives and which drives system restore is enabled or disabled on by showing on or off and you're gonna to wanna to at least look at the main drive, typically your C drive, and it'll say system next to it to show which uh, uh, drive the operating system is installed on. So if that says on, you're good. If it says off, then you're gonna to wanna to turn it on, and you can do that by clicking on the drive, left-clicking it, and then that'll highlight it. Then you go to configure, and then select turn on system protection. Also in this menu, you can choose the maximum space usage that will be allocated for system restore points. And I would suggest if you have a lot of free space, maybe put it at like 10%. And then if you don't have a lot of free space, maybe put it at 5%. And of course, the more space you have allocated, the more restore points you'll be able to have at the same time. So you'll be able to go back further. And then you can also probably calculate or get an idea of how much each restore point is gonna take up by looking at the current usage. It'll just tell you that. And remember that this is not gonna always use all the maximum space. It's just the maximum that could be used. So after you do that, you click OK, and then you should be good to go. Now, if you ever do need to do a system restore and use one of these restore points, you'll go to the same menu and then click system restore and then choose one of them and then hit next and then finish. And then you won't be able to use the computer while it's doing this. It might take like 20, 30 minutes, who knows, but then it should just automatically go through it. And you can also select before you do it, scan for affected programs, and this will tell you the programs that have been installed since that last restore point. So you'll know how many programs you might have to reinstall, or that might also give you an idea of maybe which programs caused the problem. So that's a good way to check first. Now, system restore points are typically created by Windows automatically before updates are run, but if you wanna create one manually, you can just go into that same menu before and click create restore point and go through that process. And that's typically good to do maybe 
If you're gonna be installing a bunch of programs that you're worried might mess something up, or you're gonna be changing a lot of settings, something like that. Now, I do believe that Windows creates a restore point every seven days if one hasn't been created in that time. That's at least the case in Windows 7. I'm not 100% sure about Windows 10, but you might think that you want it more often than seven days, because maybe you do a lot in seven days, and then if you have to restore it, you're gonna lose a lot. So you can actually use the task scheduler to automatically create restore points as often as you want, and we can go over how to do that right now. So what you wanna do is click the start menu and just type in task scheduler and click it there, and that will open it up. As a side note, this is a great system tool, and a lot of programs use this behind the scenes. So it can be used to do things like start programs when you log in or at a certain time, stuff like that. But that's more of a topic for another day, so let's continue with this. On the right side of the task scheduler, you'll see a box that says actions. So you're gonna wanna click create task, and then we're gonna go through each tab and say what settings to change and only change the ones that I say, everything else can just be left default. So in the general tab, you can name this whatever you want, such as create restore point, and then lower down, you'll wanna choose run whether user is logged in or not. And then you'll also want to check run with highest privileges. And that's all for this tab. Next in the triggers tab, you'll wanna click new and then choose daily and then recur every three days is probably good or however often you want. And the time setting time during the day doesn't really matter. I would say that you probably don't wanna do it more often than three days, because remember, there are a finite number of restore points you can have for however much storage you set. So for example, if there's only enough room for three system restore points and you do it every day, you can only go back three days, whereas if you have it every three days, you can go back nine days. So I would personally recommend setting it to like maybe three, four days or so, just a little bit better than a week, and then you can click OK once you set all that. Next up is the Actions tab. This one's gonna take a little bit extra work. You're gonna wanna click New, and then keep where it says Start a Program, and then in that box where it says Program slash Script, you're gonna wanna type PowerShell.exe, and then in the Add Arguments box, you're gonna wanna paste this long command. I'll put it in the description so you can just copy and paste it. And if you wanna know what this does, basically the Execution Policy Bypass just make sure that no settings are gonna prevent this from creating the restore point. And then the checkpoint computer option is what creates the restore point. And then the description and restore point type parameters are pretty self-explanatory. That's what the restore point will show up as in the menu. And then after you paste that in that box, you can just click okay. Next up in the conditions tab, you can go to power and uncheck start the task only if the computer is on AC power because this really doesn't use much energy or time. And then finally, in the settings tab, you're gonna wanna check run task as soon as possible after scheduled start missed. And this way, if your computer is not on at the exact time the schedule is said to take place, it'll just run as soon as you turn the computer on next time. And then in that tab and all the other tabs, you can just keep the rest as is and then click okay, and that should create it. And now you should be able to look in that list and see that your task is there and it was created successfully. And I would also definitely recommend testing this out. So what you can do is right click on your custom task in the list and hit run and that'll immediately run it. And then you can just wait a minute after hitting run and then go to the system restore settings menu again and check to make sure that the one it just created shows up in the system restore points options so you know that it's creating them correctly. So now you should be all set up and it should be running automatically in the background. Hopefully you never use it, but if your computer does have a massive problem one day, that's one of the first things you can try and you'll have one that hopefully is no longer than three days old. So hopefully this video was helpful, especially if it was not enabled by default. And you can let me know down in the comments, let me know if it was disabled by default or maybe it was enabled. I'm not sure if it happens for everybody, but at least now you know. So thanks so much for watching guys. If you wanna check out some other videos I have, you can just click on these right here, especially some other Windows settings I would recommend changing. It's a great video. So until next time guys, be seeing you.